Recognizing me, um, I strongly oppose the so-called Dismantled DEI Act of 2024, and I confess that I'm really baffled uh, as to where it's coming from or what it means. It um, directly overturns uh, five or six different executive orders um, by President Biden. Um, I don't have time to go through all of the executive orders that um, would become roadkill under this legislation, but let's just take one of them, um, which simply says that uh, there should be equity in hiring for people who belong to communities who have traditionally faced systematic denial of equal treatment under the law. And then illustratively, it identifies disabled people, people who have faced discrimination based on their religion, people who live in rural uh, communities in the country, veterans and military spouses, um, people from communities of color, individuals from communities that have faced discrimination based on uh, sexual orientation and gender identity, uh, people who face discrimination based on um, their status as students or not students, um, people um, who uh, have limited English proficiency, and um, pregnant women, uh, as well as people who face discrimination based on older age. Um, now look, um, the Biden-Harris administration, as you say, has made it uh, a priority to bring in more veterans, military spouses, people living in rural communities, people who are parents, older Americans, people who have faced discrimination and so on. Uh, that's because we're a lot stronger when we include everybody. That's what I understand these efforts are all about. A federal wor workforce that actually reflects the diversity of our country makes us stronger. And the largest employer in the United States has a responsibility to lead the way and to model what it means to be open to everybody. We know the, of uh, our history where lots of the groups that I just mentioned were by law or by custom or, by, or simply by discrimination excluded from participation in the federal workforce. Um, and we know that that's been true of African Americans. We know it's been true of Asian Americans. We know it's been true of Hispanic Americans. There's been discrimination against pregnant women and so on. So all these executive orders do is to articulate a policy that's based on federal law now because it's against the law to discriminate um, on the basis of all of those different categories that I mentioned. Now, that's my first serious objection I have looking um, at this um, legislation, which I don't believe we've had a hearing on. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think there's been a hearing on it. Um, Here's my, here's my uh, second major problem with it. Um, it not only says we're going to dismantle any effort that's taking place in every agency and department of the federal government to make sure that hiring is taking place consistent with um, American law and American values, but then it says anybody who was working in one of those offices suddenly becomes ineligible to be rehired or reassigned anywhere else in the federal government. I've never seen something like that. I mean, but, you know, we can have the policy debate about whether or not it's, you know, good to have an HR effort that um, opens the doors to everybody and consciously tries to do that. But if you, if you decide that you want to do a U-turn on what the Biden-Harris administration has done, I just don't see how you can turn it into a permanent scarlet letter for people who were assigned to those offices or who went to work to the, in those offices um, to never get a job again in the federal government. I mean, that's remarkable. That comes very close to being a bill of attainder in the Constitution. I know a bill of attainder applies only to affixing a criminal stigma or penalty to someone. This uh, affixes a professional stigma 
or a penalty, a real scarlet letter to somebody who's just been doing their job. They might have been doing a great job at it, but suddenly we're declaring them um, a, a pariah, um, someone who is in exile from the federal workforce that they may have given 5, 10, 15, 18, 20 years to. That just makes no sense, and I would love to have somebody explain the logic uh, of doing that. Um, this, you know, imagine a veteran, say, who's a doctor, I know someone who's a doctor, who then, um, in, in the VA, who then goes to work in a diversity office to make sure that the VA is hiring uh, diverse members from the field of veterans in the country. Well, now we're saying we're going to close down your office, we're going to shut down your operation, we're going to send the message that uh, all efforts towards uh, diversity and inclusion stop, and then we're going to say you can't go back to be a doctor at the VA hospital, or you can't get a job even in another agency or department. You can't go work um, at the transportation department. Uh, you can't go work at HHS. And th that, to me, reflects the, uh, the sloppiness and the recklessness of this legislation, which is an attempt to take an absolute sledgehammer to efforts across the entire federal government to promote what I think is an essential American value, which is making sure that the federal government itself be open to people from every walk of life <coughs> and every American community. Um, and with that, I will yield back to you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I ask unanimous consent to enter the following letter of support uh, for the bill, letter from Heritage Action uh, in support of the Cloud Bill. I now recognize the sponsor of the bill, Mr. Cloud from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Diversity, equity, and inclusion are three words that don't necessarily mean what we think they mean. And in spite of the altruistic motives of some of the purveyors of it, diversity, equity, inclusion, as it's been initiated in our federal government as an ideology, seeks to categorize individuals based on their immutable characteristics. It is a rejection of the principle that people should be judged on the content of their character and their individual achievement rather than their sex, race, nat national origin, or ethnicity. DEI is a huge step backwards for our country. It has taken generations, not to mention a civil war, a civil rights movement, to move past a, a stain on our nation's history. But we have made tremendous progress. But to codify discrimination in an effort to remove discrimination is a woeful woeful uh, initiative uh, and would undo generations of progress we have made as a nation on this. Every tear, every drop of blood, the sweat of our founders, our forefathers that have fallen would be in vain for us to continue and to reverse the path that we have. True justice is blind. It should not consider race or sex. And it's the duty of us as lawmakers to write just laws, and it's the duty of the executive branch to be just in administering them without deference to race, creed, religion. Yet the Biden administration has pushed through DEI initiatives into every policy and government department. What this bill seeks to do is really three things. It seeks to close the DEI offices that have been set up in virtually every single agency. And as well, this federal government has pushed these policies and sort of force fed them on the American population by requiring that anyone who does business with the federal government, contractors also have to adhere to these DEI policies, as well as the grant writing process. So this would write what may be a well-intended policy, but has done great harm to our country. It's been very divisive. A new report from Do No Harm counted 500 DEI actions that the Biden administration took place or planned to take. DEI ideology simply does not work and only serves to divide our country. DEI ideology also results in absurd government-funded programs 
and it's been a complete waste of taxpayer dollars and is dangerous as sometimes people who do not have the competencies to carry out the job are placed in jobs for DEI reasons. It is time for us to unwind this bureaucratic initiative and to restore a functioning government that does not give preference to race, sex, or any of these characteristics. Thank you, Chair. Would the gentleman yield for and a I question? Yield back. Would the, the author yield for one question? Sure. But I'm just curious if you would explain um, the, the meaning and import of the provision that would make someone who works in one of those offices ineligible for rehiring or reassignment in a federal department or hiring somewhere else. They could reapply for another office. What, what we are not going to do is take a, an office that has been stood up for the purposes of DEI and mandate that the federal government has to somehow find a place for people who have, uh, if they are there as and their credentials are to be a DEI officer, we do not have to find a, a way to place them somewhere else. The, these were uh, initiatives that were placed by the federal government and or by the executive actions of the, the president, and they need to be pushed back on. Thank you, okay. Chairman. Say, I yield back. If, if I could, could I just pursue that for one second? Okay, um, I, I yield it back to the chair. Okay. Thank you. Uh, yield back to any other member seek recognition. Ms. Stansberry from New Mexico. All right, well, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member, and to the gentleman for bringing